Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, we've got the final way of removing the glass from your XK8, XKR, X100 headlights. First of all, we're going to put the light into a tray to contain any spills. Put it face down, or glass down. And then we're going to pour approximately one litre of petrol. I'm in the UK, so we're using unleaded fuel, um, petrol or gasoline, depending where you are in the world. And a litre is about one and three quarter pints for those of you in the States. And we're pouring that inside the headlight unit and adjusting the headlight to settle such that the petrol is touching the seal uh, or sealant all the way around. I'm just going to leave that in a safe, well ventilated area and I'm going to leave it overnight. Okay, we're back in the shed next door to the garage and the lamp has been sat overnight. What we're gonna do now is see what the situation looks like. Got my nitrile gloves on. Let's just pick the lamp unit up. Tip some of the remaining petrol into that dish. You can see I've got a piece that's come off. This has been uh, glued on previously. There's also a crack oops, in the underside of this lamp. That was also there previously across here. And just looking at the sealant, you can see it's basically, this is the glue that held the trim on. And that's just dissolved away. You can actually see some of the sealant itself here is just popped out. So chances are this thing is fully released. However, it's also falling apart. So this lamp did have some cracks in it, but it's literally everywhere there's a crack, the crack has opened and it's just let go. Let's get the glass off. What I've got for 
removing the glass, just from lessons learned from previous, is a spreader tool used for removing trim. And because I'm touching glass with it, I'm just going to put a bit of masking tape around the prongs because they're metal. There we go. Just so we don't have metal on glass contact. And spin this round to an edge. You can see it's really badly cracking up. Pull that seal off. Put the spreader tool in, and it literally just lifts glass off. There we go. Whoops, spilled some fuel. There's part of the headlamp still attached at the bottom because again, the whole thing's just broken up. Hmm. Yeah, just crumbling. Yeah, I'm going to have to work on the assumption here that the, the petrol has degraded this sealant, but it has also denatured or remove the oils from the plastic to the extent that it was an old um, heat damaged and slightly cracked unit anyway but it has just crumbled um, there is no repairing of this so I think we've got to assume what we've learned from this experiment is if you wanted to dissolve, dissolve the seal petrol will do the job but you'd have to be very careful with it. You certainly couldn't do what I've done and leave it overnight because it's just going to take too much of the uh, goodness out of the plastic. Which really leaves you with the only safe option is A, you remove this with the heat gun slash hairdryer method and plenty of patience. Or B, you purchase a very expensive replacement. Yeah, we're not going to call this a success <laughs> because there is just too much potential for 
any weakness in this to be exploited by the fuel. And I would also suggest that also rules out any other form of solvent helping us to uh, release the glass. Well, I can't pretend that wasn't a disappointing end to that experiment. I was really convinced. Having done the test with um, plastic and the sealant in the little metal tin for, I think, about 12 hours, um, that the sealant would degrade and the plastic wouldn't. And as I said, the other headlight was damaged. It did have a split in it. It actually had a split that was very obvious here. Um, and there was probably others on it, but it is certainly broken up <clears throat> after admittedly 24 hours with the fuel. That was just the nature of I got called away to do something. Um, so I've got to conclude that none of the solvents we're going to find around the home or garage are going to do the job of affect the sealant that holds the glass on, but leave the plastic completely unaffected. So we are back to slow work with a hairdryer or heat gun, raising the temperature of the whole unit, um, slowly applying a little bit of leverage until you can get a gap, popping in a plastic trim tool and then reheating and using the fact that we've got a cavity here to turn it into its own oven. So warming up through the headlamp holes, getting the heat inside. Some of you can try this out with an oven at home in much the same way as BMW owners have been doing for years with the plastic lensed lights. I just have my reservations on that because when you take the full plastic BMW unit out of the oven, it'll retain uh, some warmth and evenness throughout the whole thing. The glass and the plastic, uh, totally different heat properties. It will lose its heat really fast. This stuff resets and yeah, they're really well attached. So I think working it with a hairdryer or heat gun is a safer, more gentle way of doing it. Prepared to be wrong. So now I have one headlight. And I was never intending building these for my car because as we've discussed before, I've got new headlights on mine. What I'm going to do with this next is I'm going to pick out the remainder of the sealant and clean up in very basic fashion the internals. Um, there's some crusty brown stuff here, which I think is the result of um, a bit of water getting in, washing around, and uh, it's sort of dried out and left this crystallized brown substance. Get all that off, and then we'll look at clean it up properly, including how do we eliminate any loose chrome plate. So I managed to dig out most of the seal. I'm just going to get this lens out of the indicator now. And there is three plastic lugs. One is easy to see just there. So we're going to deflect that. As always, old plastics. So a bit of warmth is your friend. Just going to put a screwdriver on the right hand side of that and push it left. If 
put my finger through the hole, I can push the lens forward very gently, and that should help it. There we go. And there's the, the lens out, you see it just got one, two, three little hook type tabs and I would just push in this one this way whilst gently pushing on the lens and flexing it. And that comes out. Which gives us a view of the actual indicator pocket or reflector. And now what we're going to do is just go around with our friend alcohol and give the whole thing a good wipe over. And I've got a little brush just to get into these grooves because they've still got a lot of dirt and crustiness in them. And I just get most of that freed off. Just using the 2023 calendar to show you, here are the headlights on Harley Dowdle's XK8, like I have. You can see the fully chromed reflector. If we look at another image, this one's David Zabal Goshias. I apologize if that's not wrong, David, sorry. He's got an XKR, and hopefully what you can see is only the indicator and side light element inside that lamp is chromed. The headlight and main beam is black. Now what this means is if you are restoring a set of these lights, then you have the option of not re-chroming all of this area here. And by doing so, you're turning it into an XKR light you just clean off all of the chrome. If you can get a nice, clean black plastic finish, job done. If not, you'd want to apply some satin black paint. Or indeed, you could customize it and make it body colored. This area on the left-hand side tends to suffer less damage, it has to be said. Um, probably just because of gravity. This end is slightly lower, so any moisture tends to roll over here. This is slightly higher and so probably stays a little drier. But even as new, that's unaffected by time. That is just a finish on the side of the indicator pocket, let's call it. It's not brilliant. So maybe you still need to restore this side. Just by cleaning this up with a bit of alcohol, we've again exposed just how weak this silvered finishes because more of it has come off. So removing the, the chrome is not desperately difficult, it has to be said. If I just put a little bit more alcohol in here now, give it a few seconds, give things a rub. You can probably see I'm smearing it and a good deal of that chrome is coming off. People often imagine that the chrome on plastic is basically a paint. I think this shows it isn't because paint sticks better. 
which is also why it is very hard to duplicate without going back to the original process, which is just not available to us mortals. Hence, we need something a bit different. We should have a look at the calendar because it is a new month and we have Harley Dowdles 2005 XK8 at Little Lake, Peterborough, Canada. Hi, Harley. Obviously, with one very obvious standout conversation piece connected to Harley's car, and that is wire wheels. So, wires were never a factory option. But it has to be said, many dealers, Jaguar dealers, offered them as an option from their site. So it's not completely unauthentic to have the wires. And anyway, if you like the look, that's the end of it. You're going to have them. They are still available. If you're in the UK, you'd go to maybe MWS, which I think stands for Midland Wheel Specialists. Um and Dayton wheels in the United States. And these are bolt-on wires in 18 inch. But they're not suitable for Brembo equipped cars. My gut feel is that XKR owners probably are gonna be less interested anyway. XK8 owners probably a little bit more inclined towards the wires. And it tends to be the XKRs that have Brembo brakes. So I've used lots of different chrome style paints on all sorts of things over the years. And they tend to disappoint, it has to be said. Um, at best, they come out like a nice bright aluminium colour. Those that have a really good gloss tend to be a darker silver and look more like uh, the silver you'd see on maybe an alloy wheel. But chrome effects are kind of a myth in paint world. So I've done all my investigation and I've come up with what by all other reviews seems to be the very best that you can buy. Um, do your own research, but it's this, which is called Go Chrome by Stardust Colours. This is a French outfit. You can go on the website and order it in most places in the world. The code on this one is GFC10. Uh, this is the brush-on effect, which allegedly give very good results. There is an aerosol, but if you want to do external uh, chrome finishes, maybe on door handles, things like that, then you'd want to be able to over lacquer them. And for that, you need the airline spray paint version of this. So you'd buy the paint, add thinners, and there's a separate overcoat and lacquer and everything else for it. And there's a whole system. The paint on with a brush version and the spray on with an aerosol version are not rated for abrasion. So rubbing or polishing will just take them off, much like this original coating. So we're gonna try this out and see how effective it is. Um, it doesn't look very silver in the container, but what is very obvious is it's a carrier solution for an awful lot of metal. So I'm gonna shake this up rather well. I'm gonna decant a little bit into another one of my Famous tins. I've got lots. <laughs> and we're going to paint a little on and see how good it is in terms of chrome effect. And obviously we have a nice comparison. Um, but also how it evens itself out. One of the features of this stuff is you're going to hand brush it on. But it is supposed to even out rather well. The only reason for decanting it is ease of dipping a brush in. So 
So we'll pour some in. You see, it's quite special stuff, just by the way that's reacting and moving around. And I hope this is going to go well because this is not a cheap experiment. When you bear in mind, I don't need this headlamp. This is purely for the interest of it. Now look at that, it's settled to rather a good chromey looking finish, even though it's basically grey. I'm using a pretty rough and ready brush because I want to see what's the worst that can happen, so to speak. Here we go. I'm not going to brush it out particularly thin. Just going to do the whole of this pocket at the bottom and see what happens. Just to even out my brush marks. A little bit of mist there. I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Just watch, see what occurs. Oh, it's visibly brightening while I watch. That's really quite interesting. All the little black specks, well, they were grey, gunmetal sort of specks, are getting smaller and leaving behind a much brighter film. Just blown on it and it's brought up their speckles again. This is interesting stuff. It's clear I'm going to have to let this dry to really evaluate it. And do a little bit on these ribs, see how that turns out. I think what I'm already learning with this is you want a very wet finish. Obviously, runs are to be avoided, but you can clean up most of that up afterwards. If you get a nice wet finish on it. It's going to chrome over beautifully. I am really impressed. So let's do this bit. Let's get this on. Well, I think that's the end of my experiment with this. I have resilvered the headlight. It is more than acceptable. The chrome paint is capable of producing remarkable results. I mean, chrome, 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 properly mirrored. However, a combination of my skill and the shape of this means I, I tend to be able to get a really good finish in places but it's not matched in others. Now I'm going to put a lot of that down to my lack of talent, let's say, with the paint. Um, those who are able to do spraying, um, I think definitely worth an experiment, but it isn't a cheap option. You're not going to be chrome spraying a car, um, and I doubt it's economic to try it out on wheels, particularly as you're going to have to over-lacquer it, and maybe the finish isn't going to be so good. So 
I think definitely worth having a small tub of this for bits and pieces. There's items what I've already thought, right, that is going to be used on. One of the considerations was when I put these clear fronts on my side reflectors, if I go around the other side out of the sun, <clears throat> um, you basically dis disassemble your existing reflectors, which have a grey interior. And I squirted a little bit of silver paint on them before I glued these back on. Uh, it would have been far better with a chrome finish in there. And very often on other vehicles, I've got um, tail lights disassembled maybe that I'm playing around with. And they're really shoddy reflectors. Some of them are just bent bits of metal. Uh, I'm thinking back to my T25, the fog and reversing lights were just curved pieces of galve as the reflectors. You could quite easily put some of that chrome paint on and get a brilliant reflector out of it. And lots of little cosmetic things, badges and emblems, particularly interior things, I think it could work particularly well on. So really pleased I bought it. Um, so £50, so it was not an, ex uh, an inexpensive item, but does the job. Final conclusions on the headlight, glass and plastic. Yes, you can separate them. Do it with heat. I recommend a hairdryer or a heat gun kept to about 85 degrees. Others have used ovens. If you're gonna use an oven, be extraordinarily careful that you don't break the glass. When you make the glass come into contact with a work surface or a top, the gradient in temperature will change quick and you can easily shatter it. So I would stick to slow and careful plastic tools or a spreader tool with um, some sort of tape on it to lift the glass off and you can repair the reflectors to a very reasonable standard. So if it's a choice between a completely jiggered headlight and a brand new one for £700, it may be worth you trying out this, particularly if you can get hold of a second set of lights to do your experiments on. Right, that's dragged that out more than far enough. I will be gluing my glass back on at some stage. The reason I'm not is I may turn this into an objet d'art. I've got an idea to maybe stick a clock face in here and an idea of maybe putting a speaker element or something in to make it something nice for my office. Not sure, um, shan't be selling it, shan't be doing anything like that. So um, watch this space. Next time, let's look at something completely different. If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.